We have huge numbers of people, I mean billions of people in the world who don't have adequate water and sanitation services, about a billion people who have no toilet. We're really looking for solutions which work technically but can be embedded in a, in a political process that, that is robust and also financially sustainable in the city. These are very complex problems, they're, they're, they're almost insolvable problems and that's because it's more than a technical problem. It's a technical problem, it's an institutional problem, it's a political problem. The bottom line is that sanitation is not a cheap business. Um, we can extract a lot of value from sanitation products but historically in this country, uh, in America, all over Europe, really there's no country which has transformed from a state of having very limited sanitation to having full sanitation coverage without pretty big investment. But we also know that economically the benefits are huge. If you can get all of that faecal contamination out of the environment, you can reduce the incidence of diarrheal disease, you can reduce the incidence of uh, helminthic worm infections, which has a massive impact on productivity, on the ability of children in school to learn, nutritional status, stunting, you know, it's, it's the, the impacts are massive. So if you can persuade governments to make those kind of big but not massive by, by public funding terms, investments in ongoing support to sort of managing sanitation, you get a huge gain. Typically, you know, you invest a dollar in sanitation, you get about a nine dollar public benefit back. Here in the School of Civil Engineering, we run a Masters in Water, Sanitation and Health Engineering. So it's specifically designed to attract early to mid-career public health or water professionals from Africa and South Asia. What we are able to give them, I think, is a, a year, a space, to really reflect on what they've been doing what it means and very often they come with a couple of real sort of problems from their own countries which are sort of exercising their their minds and we we really endeavor very much in that program to make the program very practical so the cohort of students work together a lot puzzling over real problems it's great for us because they bring that context into the conversation so all of them are sharing problems and context so they learn a lot about what's happening all over the world we had a a student from Malawi who was operating a water treatment works um, which had been provided under a rather ill-conceived aid program I would say and the technology was not really appropriate to the skills and capacity and budget that they had available in that particular department so you know one of his questions was so what do we do with this problem that we have now you know what's the best thing to do so during the year we spent a lot of time talking about you know what what of that system is valuable and useful and can be can be sort of built up from and how much of it is perhaps not so useful. I think he felt that strategically afterwards he would be able to go home and, and perhaps negotiate more effectively with funding partners about, well, you know, if you want to support us, support us, but these are the things that we really need and want, and this is what we're trying to achieve. And what I really enjoy is that at the end of the year, I look at the students uh, going out from our programme, and I feel like they're going to go out there and they're really going to sort of fight for good water and sanitation solutions in the context where they work. One of the things that I really like about our programme is that almost exclusively our students go back home. A student from Zambia on our programme is almost always, I could guarantee, going back home to Zambia to work for local government or for a consultancy firm or for um, an aid agency, but in Zambia really trying to sort of solve the problem. The other thing that's very nice is that the cohorts of students have tended to stay in touch and so they're forming a fantastic network of WASH professionals all over the world. You know, I see the email correspondence, they have a Facebook group, they, you know, they talk to each other all the time now. Even more than that, uh, one of the other things that happens is we almost get sort of cycling of students. So uh, I had a student uh, last year who got in touch with me and said, would one of your current cohort of students like to come out and carry a specific piece of research as their research project? Because we need this work doing. We don't really have time to do it. Um, so, you know, that sort of mutual support that we provide and that they get is it's a huge... I mean, I, I love that network. I think it's a really... It's great for me. And I think it's really good for the students too.